Hello, welcome back to the Running Channel Monthly Show. It's your one-stop shop for all the top tips, running news, and challenges that you could ever need. And we're kicking off season two with our brand new studio. Who's an ours, please? Ooh, ah. Yeah, we have been busy behind the scenes making season two bigger and better than before. And we've loved getting your feedback about the show. So if you've got any other suggestions or comments about what you would like to see, please pop them in the comments box. We'd love to hear from you. But before we get going, don't forget to click subscribe and give us a like if you enjoy what we're doing. But right now, here's what's coming up. If you are like I was, marathon training, then it's really important to have a long run as a long run because it gives you mental benefits of mm. being able to have that mental strength to push through. Afterwards, he said that his urine looked like Guinness. Oh, I'm not surprised. He didn't eat anything. <laughs> First up, Inside Track. We take a look at the new running launches from tech to shoes to gadgets that you thought you'd never need, but now you can't live without. <laughs> Today, we're taking a look at the Hoka One One Kiwanis. Now, these are a shoe that are designed for pretty much everyday fitness, from running to just heading down the gym. We've sent Sarah to check them out. We've just had an exciting delivery of the brand new Hoka Kawana shoes at the Running Channel office, and these look very, very cool. Now, Hoka say that these shoes can take you from road to workout, and I'm gonna be putting this to the test. Can one shoe serve you for everything? Let's find out. Right, they're on my feet. First impressions. They feel really bouncy, really comfy. Only reservation though is when I wear gym shoes, I usually don't go for something as cushioned. So I'll be interested to see how they perform in that. But first, I've got a busy day of filming, so let's head out. We are just making our way to set up for the shoot, going a little bit cross country in the mud, but the shoes are doing well. Very comfy for just walking around so far. Back from filming now and I've just come out on a little lunchtime run and then I'm going to head back to the office to do a little body weight workout as well. Really putting the shoes through their paces and I have to say, so far I'm really impressed. They're a little bit wider than some of the other hokers that I've worn in the past and you don't have that feeling of, oh I just want to get these trainers off, I've been wearing them for too long. So one cool feature about these shoes is the swallow tail technology on the back. If I just stop for a second, you can see that on the back of the shoe here, there's a kind of extra little bit that sticks out. And now heels have been changing on shoes recently. And if you look at the backs of running shoes from the Vaporflies, different ones of Hokers, they've all got kind of interesting designs on the back. How much this actually does with your running, I'm not sure, but one thing with these is you do feel nice and springy. It's kind of pushing me onto my forefoot, making me kind of up, elevated a little bit more. And they are really nice and springy as well. 5K done, now let's work out. <laughs> workout complete and thoughts on the Kiwanis, really impressed. They were really nice and light on my feet for when I was doing stuff like ab workouts, it didn't feel like I was being weighed down, but equally when I was doing things like burpees, they were quite light and springy. So overall thoughts on the shoes are, there is a shoe that can do everything. Yes, it's not gonna be your fastest shoe for racing or the ultimate shoe to wear in the gym, but if you're looking for something, a one-stop shop for all of your activities, then thinking of something like the Hoka Kiwanis is probably a really good shout because I didn't feel like I was hindered in doing anything that I did today. And I definitely wanna keep these on my feet for the rest of the day too. Thank you for that wicked review, Sarah. They look really nice actually, those Kiwanis. Those ones, yeah, really smart. We're gonna look at the rest of the running launches for this month, starting with Rick, which is why he is standing with a shoe in his hands. Yeah, I'm like the leaning tower of Pisa, Anna, not just to get closer to you, but because these shoes have such a thick sole. Look at them. So that's the Hoka Arahi sixes, um, and Rick is leaning because he only has one shoe on. Yeah, so you've been wearing them getting from A to B, because obviously you're not running at the moment, yep. you're injured. How do they feel? Well, they are a stability shoe. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I would say they're also incredibly light, loads of cushioning, very comfy, and when it's cold outside, I found they've kept my feet really warm, especially on the bottom. Not necessarily the top, but the bottom. Excellent. Also in the running launches this month, we've got some tech. So Huawei have launched a new specific running watch. So it's the first time they've done one specifically for running. It's called the GT Runner, and it's been designed to compete with the likes of Garmin and Polar. Okay. And then Garmin, speaking of them, they've also had two massive launches this month. So they've launched the Phoenix 7 and the Epix which is epic. Really? See what I did there? Yeah. So the Epix has colored maps as a feature, which is really cool. And the Garmin Phoenix 7 has got loads of updated features, including one called Stamina. If you'd like to know what that is, then check out our full video where Andy Baddeley has reviewed the whole watch. We love hearing from you about what you would like us to review or test properly, and also what other new launches you'd like us to see in this feature. So please do leave them in the comments below. Each month, I'll be meeting up with a fellow runner to discuss the running news for that month. And this month, I'm joined by Manny. Hey, Sarah. Hello, you all right? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Should we go for a run? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Let's do it. Ooh, it's a bit chilly. Oh, it is a bit <laughs> cold. It is a bit cold. And getting out in January is so hard when it is so cold. I know you've been off in Uganda. I've been in Thailand. We're now back in the UK. Back. And it's freezing. But often, running events are a great way of getting you out. And my new story for this month is, over in Yorkshire, there's an event called the Temple Newsome 10, which yeah. took place, which has okay. a hill called Cardiac Hill. Cardiac Hill. Cardiac Hill. So the race itself is a 10 miler, and the first bit is like relatively flat, not too bad. Then the second half of this race has Cardiac Hill in it, and you are knee deep in mud, like knee deep and beyond in mud. Wellies are recommended. 10 miles to start off the year. <laughs> Knee deep in mud yeah. and big hills. Yeah, what are you saying? Do that's you a challenge. Do it? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that's a challenge. I mean, if you start your year off like that, you're mentally going to build some resilience, aren't you? What about you? What news has got you thinking about this month? Do you know what? There was a story about this young man, David Fitzgerald in Liverpool. He's unbelievable. He has been running 5K every day 365 days of the year he's run 5k unbelievable that is incredible that, that for me is brilliant like imagine getting 363 days in and then having to stop oh, <laughs> that'd be so brutal that'd be heartbreaking i think personally the key thing to think about is being progressive you can walk run you can use different routes so that you don't get bored. Yeah. And you know what? Also, getting people to run with you. Oh, you yeah. You never guess what? He got somebody to run with him. Who did he get? He got his one of his idols, Jamie Carragher, Liverpool footballer. Oh, stop it. You know I mean, that'll get you out for a 5K, exactly. wouldn't it? Exactly. I wouldn't mind a run with Jamie Carragher either. <laughs> Jamie, if you're watching, listen, give us a shout. Yeah, you we'll can come. Run. Yeah, next month. Yeah. We'll get him out on the run as well. So here are some other stories that we felt deserved a mention this month. First off, Emil Keres matched Mo Farah's British record in the 10,000 metres. Absolutely incredible achievement. Amazing news, 24 year old, great stuff. I got some news for you. Yeah. Christine Mboa, she won silver medal at Tokyo Olympics 2020 and also has won the African Sports Personality of the Year award. She's the first Namibian to win an Olympic medal, silver medal. Unbelievable for an 18 year old. It's got amazing news. Awesome, congratulations. If there's any other running news that you want us to talk about, let us know in the comments and we will see you next month for some more running news. See you then. Bye. <laughs>
or the weather. So let's head outside and I'll talk you through how to do it. This session is called a three, two, one. So you're gonna be starting off with an eight minute warm up. Once you've done that, it's time for your first interval, which is three minutes at just slightly faster than your 5K pace. Now Zwift will work out your paces for you and recommends that you run this at around 103% of your 5K pace. Then you have a one minute recovery at a slower pace, which is roughly 70% of your 5k pace. Then it's time for your next interval, two minutes long this time and slightly faster than that first interval. Grab yourself another one minute recovery and then it's time for a really hard one minute interval, even faster pace than the other two to really get those legs turning over. Once you've done that, Give yourself three minutes to recover and then do the set again from three minutes, two minutes and one minute. Once you've done the second set, it's time for a cool down or if you're feeling up to it, you could actually do a third set as well. So give this workout a go and let us know how you got on. Now it's time for Ask TRC, Rick's favorite, where you send in questions to us to answer all about running. So I'm gonna kick things off with the first question we've had sent yep. in. So this is from Kenneth Danielson. He says, is it in theory possible to slice your long run into two runs just by increasing the intensity of each run? And if so, how? Tricky one. But a very good question. Yeah. And one that I often pondered whilst marathon training myself. So there's no really kind of finite answer to this one. It depends what you're training for and it depends what the benefit of the long run is, I suppose, because if you are like I was, marathon training, then it's really important to have a long run as a long run because it gives you mental benefits of mm. being able to have that mental strength to push through and to run for a really long time because come race day, you're gonna be running for a really long time. And wouldn't it be cheating to cut it into? Well, it's, you're only cheating yourself. But I do get that some people just might not have the time to do one long run. And so yeah, it can take hours. It can, absolutely. Yeah. You know, probably two, three hours or whatever. So if you're short on time, then sure, doing two runs cut into two and pushing the intensity of both of them, so running them a bit faster than you would one long run, is better than no run at all. And if you're training for a shorter distance than a marathon, it probably doesn't make too much difference. But if it is sort of a half marathon marathon, marathon. that you're going for, keep that long, long run intact. Long run, yeah. It wouldn't make sense, would it? Well, Take it out. It kind of does make sense. It kind of doesn't give you the same benefit though. Okay, so my question is from Gemma Bisex. She says, hi team, question. What is runners not and how do you do it? Ha <laughs> ha. Also, how does it differ from normal not or double not? Love the channel, keep up the good work, Gem. Hi Gem. There you go. Gem of a question, no. love oh, it. I see what you did there. Yeah, Gem, quick, Gem of a right question. off my feet. Um, I don't have any idea. When don't you said you? runner's not then, I thought you meant like a stitch. Really, you don't, haven't got a clue? No. Okay. Tell me. Right, well, a runner's knot is a special type of knot which uses the little eyelets at the very top of your trainers oh. or sneakers, depending on where you're watching this video. Shoelaces. Often on your shoelaces, you'll have an extra hole which kind of loops over, it doubles over the back. Mm -hmm. Now, when we tie our shoelaces, we tend to go crisscross, 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 right the way up to the top. But most of the time, we won't use that top eyelet that goes over the top at all, actually. Yeah. And we probably just looked at it and go, well, what's that for? It's yeah. completely pointless. But also a lot of us do kind of suffer, I know I do, from pain sometimes when I tie my uh, laces too tight right on the front, so yes. across the metatarsals yes. on the front. Yes. And that kind of pain is often because we've done our laces too tight and then we're halfway through a race, but no one wants to stop in a race if our shoelaces aren't actually undone. No. Runner's knot though is not a normal knot uh, to answer your question, Gem. So what you do with the knot is tie your laces as normal. Get up to that second, get up to that final eyelet. Instead of then crossing at the top, come oh, out yeah. and back in. So stay on the same side, out and back in yeah. on both sides, Yeah. right? Then cross your lace and pull tight. And then do your shoe up as normal. And then do your shoe up as normal. Yeah. This way, you've got a tautness, a tightness at the very top of your shoe, 
which will give you greater support in the ankle area. Yes. And of course, keep your shoe on, but it will remove that restriction, that tightness down the front across your metatarsals, which is where we often tend to feel pain specifically in marathons and longer races. I have a wider foot and a narrow, feel like I've got a narrow ankle. And so that holds it, like you say, holds your ankle in, but still mm. gives you the space and room to breathe at the front. It is a nippy idea for foot pain. Excellent stuff. Hopefully you've learned something there. And if you have got any questions that you'd like us to answer, like, do you go to the toilet during a marathon? Please do. That is a good one. Email them in to ask TRC. And how many times? At the running channel .com. Time for a brand new feature in the monthly show, seen on my run. So we wanna hear all about the mad challenges and races, the wackier the better that you guys have been up to. So our first submission is from Eric Saborin, who has written to share his experience of taking on the David Goggins oh. 4448. Oh, you got that right. Do you know what that is? I do. Go on. No, I don't. So you run four miles. Go on every four hours yeah for 48 hours that's insane so do you remember do you remember when i did the one mile an hour challenge for 24 yes, hours you yeah run one mile on the hour every hour for, for, 20, for 24 hours and you were knackered as it you'd expect. nearly killed me yeah. so um yeah eric has done four miles every four hours for 48 hours that so at least you lot. get a little bit more of a gap in between it's not like four miles every hour and i think David Goggins himself actually replied to Eric's Insta story, Anna, yeah, wish to say luck. good luck. I know, it's so cool. I don't cool. know how I feel about that. Well, yeah, but also making it even harder. So Eric says that he lives in Ottawa in Canada and the temperature during the night has been as low, and this makes me feel cold saying Go on, it, say it. Minus 20. 26 degrees Celsius. Some parts of Canada get so, so cold as someone yeah. who's married to a Canadian. <laughs> I am going to throw down the gauntlet right now. Okay. I'm not really throwing down the gauntlet. I'm just going to put myself out there. I'm quite worried about what's coming. I promise to do my best. No, to do the four by four by 48 challenge this year. You sure? Yeah on the channel. Shall I? I, I didn't Come know you were going to say that. I didn't know you were going to say that. What do you think? I think it's mad. Are you going to do it in warm weather or cold weather? Probably warm weather. Yeah. Or medium. Medium. 10 awesome. to 17 degrees. Autumnal. Optimal running conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Comment yeah. below if you want to see me take on the 4x4x48 four by four by challenge this year. And also let us know um, your experiences of running in sub-zero temperatures. We love to hear. You, what you've been up to. <laughs> so our next community member is Jorgen Giesink, who attempted to run 100K in fewer than 12 hours last year. Now he's preparing for his second attempt this year as he only, and I do say only here, managed 90K last year. That's a lot. This in might- 12 hours? Uh-huh. This might not seem an enormous amount, even though you just kind of said it did. It did. <laughs> but he also did it in barefoot. Oh whilst only taking on water and minerals. Do not do this at home. No, do not do this at home. that's a bit silly. That you bit, need yeah. fuel to run for 12 hours. So do you want to know how I did it? Training had to be worked around night shifts. What? Wow, yeah. And afterwards he said that his urine looked like Guinness. Oh, I'm not surprised, he didn't eat anything. That's just absolutely mad. What, what do you think of this? Is this impressive or is this stupid? We've also had a submission from Carol Francis, a Canadian member of the TRC community. Go Canada! Who ran and walked every street in her town in ah. 2021. How cool is that? The every street challenge. I've oh, heard of this. Sarah tried it. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. Where did she do it? Not in Canada. Not in Canada. No. Where it's very cold. Carol did it in Beamsville in Ontario. And she did it, tried it on Christmas Day as well. Uh, she missed one street, yeah, so she oh. had to finish it by walking down the one street that she missed on Christmas Day. Ooh, chilly. We would love to hear your wackiest, craziest running tales and challenges. So please, if you've got a submission for Seen on My Run for future months, email it to community at therunningchannel.com. Equally, if you've spotted something that you'd like us to take on and maybe document about it, then let us know. I mean, what could it be? I don't know the most ridiculous muddy cross-country race you've ever seen, a dodging inflatables over mountains race, I mean, all that type of stuff. <laughs> Send it in and we'll, we might give it a go, we might. <laughs> That's 
sounds awesome. Inflatables over mountains. Anyway, that I is all possible. for this month's monthly show. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.